got a devotion this morning, so you may be needed. I did my devotion on 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 4, which is in this last contact chapter. Uh, for I delivered to you as a first importance, also, but I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 15, Paul is speaking to the city of Corinth about the resurrection of Christ. He is reminding us of the important events that happened while Jesus was alive and how we shouldn't forget anything that happened. Many people, even back then, did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. However, the many rejections and temptations that Jesus faced were prophesied way back in the Old Testament. Even the manner in which he was crucified and all the pain that he went through was predicted by the prophets of God. The prophet Isaiah wrote, He was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. <clears throat> Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. This prophecy was one of many in the Old Testament that talked about Jesus' ministry on earth and ultimately his death. Jesus died for our sins in accordance with the prophets of the Old Testament. In the same way, his burial occurred in accordance with the scriptures. Both of these events are very crucial to our Christian faith as they form the foundation of what we believe. Along with this, we have the hope and promise of eternal life, which is bought for us when Jesus rose again from the dead. God worked through ordinary people in the Old Testament to bring us a Savior, who was and is and will come again with glory to bring us to, to everlasting life. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing us all here today. Thank you for giving us many signs to show us what a great and loving God you are. We pray for everyone who is sick at home who are, or who is in quarantine due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I pray that everyone who is out may return to us as soon as possible if it be your will. Thank you for the many blessings you give to us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome back, Father. Oh, thank you. Oh, you okay. <laughs> came. I know. How are you? Sorry. Yeah. What was the last day you were here? Uh, that's a very good question. I have absolutely no idea. It's been a while, though. Lizzie, how much longer for you? 19th is the Oh, dear no. It's a week. Yeah, so it's another time for a safety break. Yeah. All right, guys, um, I'm going to throw on just a little bit of music. So you have uh, like two or three minutes to look over your memory verse um, using hand signals or not, whatever works for you. Why? Signals isn't the right word. And yeah. Like signs. Yeah. Well, like little kids, when they learn hymns and songs, they use hand. What? Stimulant. Uh, well, that's not the right word, though. Is it? My mom would know. Your mom would know. <laughs> yeah. I don't right. even remember that. And you, you like go. hand motion. Yeah. Motions. Learning. I think that's. Did my dad use? No, no, no. no. <laughs> my dad works. My dad works with the little kids at our church. Like sometimes he works with Mrs. Owners. <laughs> Chase? All right, hey, this is your time to study. If you don't want to study, we can take a quiz right now. Uh, oh, absolutely not. I would fail. All
All right, guys, let's get ourselves to Schoology and take that quiz. Philippines 2, 5 to 8. Boy, when you're getting more your face. All right, everybody still working on the memory. All right. Okay. Uh, guys, we have just like two minutes, two and a half minutes, really, uh, to finish off this video. And then I'm going to give you maybe three to four minutes to uh, maybe finish or start and finish your 3 1 key for the week. And then we'll uh, start a review. And we won't take this quiz until Monday. All right. Tomorrow we have uh, Pastor Kali Moon coming in. He is a younger guy from Bethlehem. I think he just was called maybe last year. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. So he'll be here to answer some questions and things like that tomorrow. So just bring your journals and a Bible, and uh, we'll take Lesson 8 quiz on Monday after your review today. So here we go. Pick out your sheets. I'm going to go somewhere else to get sense. That's why God calls it prostitution. That's why he uses the word whoring. He says, why do you prostitute yourself? Augustus says, well, 
law has made us for himself. And our hearts are restless until we find our rest in him. Listen to the heart of God. Isaiah 53, 5, that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Do you understand the price that was paid for us to have this intimate relationship with God? How can we ignore so great a price? As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you. Oh God, my soul thirsts for the living God. Father, may that be us. Father, may we see anew the price you paid for us. And what it means that you have drawn us in to be your child. With the rights and privileges of a, of a son. To speak with you. To commune with you. To fellowship with you. You know, Father, when we stray, for us to ask you to forgive us, and you do, not because of our own merit, but because of the scars, the blood that was shed for us. Oh, Father, forgive us, for we've gone a whoring. May we always see that you are the one that satisfies. And to turn away from the world that calls out to us so many times. And we know that it's hollow and shallow. How often, Father, we drunk there and we know it to be true. Oh, Father, we might drink from the spring that wells up to eternal life. Oh, Lord, I pray for each one of these students. I pray that from this day forward in me, we would walk out of here with a hunger for you. That would be so evident to the world around us. May it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Okay. Um, it's just weird when he says a whoring. It just makes me laugh. It makes me think of the Christmas song. Here we come, a whoring of us. Okay. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, don't want to make light of it because we, we're all whores and prostitutes, according to God, in a, in a sense, right? Uh, but anyways, whatever. Uh, you guys have 3-1-Q due today, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time here to compile your thoughts into a document, submit that to uh, the classroom, and then we will go from there and uh, start a review of the highlights of the week. Hold on.
All right, so if you're still working on the 3-1-Q, that is fine. You can continue to finish up. Uh, we're going to start a review now and uh, start especially with just filling in the, the blanks here. Those will be quite important for this, uh, this lesson. I think this might have been the most straightforward uh, review-like lesson. We understand that we've been adopted children, sons and daughters of God. Um, so a lot of this, this stuff is, is already known, hopefully, by you. Uh, but it's, it's always good to keep it fresh. And uh, just as a quick wrap-up, I want to read this. Uh, Christianity is not primarily a moral or religious system, but rather it's an intimate and personal relationship with our Creator. But such a relationship can grow deeper only when we know what He desires from us and then do it. As Jesus said, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. We should constantly reread scriptures so that we can hear afresh and follow his commands. All right, let's do the blanks real quick, shall we? Number one, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. Number two, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit apart from me. What can you do? Nothing. Nothing. And I will ask the Father, number three, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. We'll stop there and just make sure that we have the diagram correct. The sphere of God and man. Help me fill it in. Who's in this sphere, Jensen? Uh, God. Namely, <laughs> and then, uh, namely who? Okay, so we have the Father. And we know there's going to be three components, as it has the divine imprint, right? Don, who else? The Son. Good. Andrew? And then man, but also a half of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and this is uh, this is why we stopped here at this point, uh, because it, it relates to this verse, right? Uh, God the Father has promised to give us um, a portion of himself. Um, and when he says a portion of, him, of himself, it's the whole God, because you can't divide infinity. God is infinite. He's uh, omnipresent. He can be everywhere at once, and not just bits and pieces of him. Oh, there's God's toe. There's his fingernail. There's his head. No. God, wherever he is, it's the full God experience. It's, it's fully him. So he gives us the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells literally within us. Can we understand this? 
As Dell asks, no. Can we believe it and trust in it through faith? Yes, of course. All right, let's keep going. Number four, in him you too are being built together to become a, what is a dwelling? A place where somebody resides, a place where somebody lives, right? Uh, in which God lives by his spirit. Number five, I've given them the glory. glory that you gave me, that they may be the one as we are one, I and them, you and me. Again, all of this intimate talk of God actually residing within each and every one of his people. Uh, it's, it's really mind-blowing, and that's kind of the whole point of this lesson. Um, the craziness of it all, the craziness that the God of the universe could live in Trisha's heart, in Brandon's heart, in Aiden's heart, in Jensen's heart, in all of us. He's in every single one of us. It's mind blowing. Six, just a bunch of ones here, right? There's one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Seven, a new command I give to you. What? Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. There you go. Number eight, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret again will reward you. And finally, number nine just came from today. As the deer pants. Do deers wear pants? No. no. What kind of pants is this talking about? Like, yeah, like a, a thirsty dog, right, after a long walk, right, panting, panting. As a deer pants for streams of water to quench its thirst, so our souls should pant for you, O oh God. We should be eager to get our butts in church. We should be eager to hear the word of the Lord. We should be eager to go to the gymnasium and soon the worship and fine arts center to hear the word of the Lord spoken to us, preached to us, even if it's verses we know and are familiar with, we can't get enough. We can't get enough. We need it. We know that we need it because that's the Holy Spirit uh, working that within us. So my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Okay, 3-1-Q time. We're going to use those uh, as our, our main form, I think, of uh, review for this week. So be prepared if I call on you to give me either a three, a one, or a Q, and we'll make sure that we hit all of the main things that gets you ready for the quiz on Monday, all right? Uh, Hans, we will start with you. Tell me one of your threes. What did you take away? What did you learn? Unio mystica means mystical union. Good. You're going to have to know that for the quiz, okay? Unio mystica. It doesn't mean one mystery or uh, um, a mystery. Uh, it means mystical union. And what is this mystical union again? Jensen, what is this mystical union? It's the um, like where the where God pretty much is including us. And yeah. We have no idea how, but we know it's happening. Yeah, he knows. He knows that he. Uh, we know that he enters into us, into our hearts, in holy baptism uh, through the hearing of the word, all the means of grace, right? And um, we, we can't really comprehend it, just as we can't comprehend the Trinity, but we can believe it, okay? Uh, what other mysteries are you guys familiar with? Del Tackett said he liked listening or reading the, uh, what, the Hardy Boys, right? Anybody in here read the Hardy Boys growing up? Yeah? Uh, what are, like, what other real life mysteries are, are you familiar with, if any? Are there any, there was a show, I think, on History Channel, Histories Mysteries. It's kind of an old guy show. I feel like only, like, old men watched it. But, uh, Andrew, do you have anything in mind? Um, uh, Roanoke. Roanoke, yeah, the island of Roanoke, right, where everyone just disappeared. Yeah. What did they write on the, like? It was, like, Roanoke or something. Yeah, it was weird. It was some weird phrase. Um, what do they think happened? Either the natives, like, just wiped them out and killed them all. And I don't know what they did with the bodies, but, uh, uh, or they just up and left. It's still kind of a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. Dom, what else? The Zodiac Killer. The Zodiac Killer. He was never caught. 
That one hurt. Is that the one that like sniped people out of the trunk of a car or something? Or no, who was the Zodiac no, killer? On it. it was in San Francisco, I think. Okay. And he kept, he, he didn't do it the same over and over. Okay. But it's still an unsolved mystery. You guys remember the uh, Malaysian flight uh, 370? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember that where it just disappeared and I think they ended up finding some wreckage or something wash up on uh, some Philippine island or some I don't know where, but uh, uh, they ended up, I think, finding potential wreckage. Amelia Earhart, right? Uh, circumnavigating the globe in her plane and she crashed somewhere. And obviously that's not a mystery. She crashed probably in the ocean or, or something and you're not going to find that. Uh, but it's still a mystery because it's really unsolved. We don't know exactly what happened. Um, we don't know exactly what happened. What about what about more simple, common things like marriage? We talked about this last week with uh, the social structures that God has given to us. Even that union of a husband and a wife is mysterious. Two flesh becoming one. Uh, communion. When you go to communion every Sunday, it's a mystery how we can be consuming Christ's true body and blood when all we see are the visible elements, the bread and the wine. But we know, we know by his word that we are consuming his body and blood and the bread and wine all together in, with, and under uh, what we see. So there's so many mysteries out there. Uh, my question is this. Can we fathom them? Can we understand them? Well, no. By definition, we can't, right? They're mysteries. Does it matter? That's a different question. Does it matter that we can't fully comprehend or understand some of these mysteries in life? Whether it's marriage, whether it's Malaysian Air Flight 370, whether it's uh, uh, the triune nature of God, does it matter that we can't fully comprehend in our human minds um, how these things work? Hans? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why not? Because we still go to heaven to understand them. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to not know. It's okay to not fully understand. It's okay uh, to believe things by faith. In fact, everybody has to. Even if you're a professed atheist, you still believe things by faith. Uh, this is not a uniquely Christian thing, right? Um, going back to the origins of the universe, right? What do you have to believe if you don't believe God created it? You have to believe something can come from nothing, which is a miracle, which is a, uh, an unfathomable, un, uh, ununderstandable uh, thing. You, you have to have faith. And we use that word faith sometimes as just a, a religious thing. But no, every person who lives on the planet has faith in something, uh, whether you acknowledge that or not. So what I would say is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because God doesn't lie to us. Uh, he's never lied to us in the past. So we know that we can trust in him. We can trust in his promises. And we can leave it at that. And we can be thankful that he's adopted us into this into this Godhead. And uh, like Del said so eloquently in his prayer, uh, that he's adopted us as sons and daughters, that we can actually commune and pray to him directly. It's, it's pretty amazing, right? So uh, reviewing, let's, let's keep going. Uh, Lauren. 31Q, tell me, what question did you write? Why did they make the trying God so difficult to understand? That's an interesting way you phrase that. Why do they make? Uh, well, God was never made, right? He's, uh, he's always been, always will be. Uh, and I think that's kind of part of the mystery, isn't it? Um, and on one hand, aren't you kind of glad you can't fully comprehend who God is? Right. Well, yeah. He he created us as 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 non all knowing critters, right? That have to depend on him and his perfection. Uh, so I think in a way I'm I'm kind of happy that I I don't fully comprehend God, um, because otherwise what would happen? What was the old garden lie? What did the devil tell Adam and Eve? If you ate of this tree, you will you will be all knowing. You will be like God. Yeah. Um, and where did that lead them? Well, severed relationships, and uh, now they have to die. Now they have to have pain in childbirth. Now they have to uh, work the fields by the sweat of their brow. Um, all these negative things come from thinking we can be like God. Um, I am happy, this is Mr. Racy speaking, 
I am happy being dependent on uh, the creator of the world. I'm happy in my position, uh, needing to rely on him for forgiveness and life. And uh, I am perfectly happy not being God. I don't know about you guys, but he's got it. He's perfect, I'm not. And uh, I, I like that. I like that arrangement. And I like that he died on the cross for me so that I don't have to do a lick of work for it. All right? That's just, that's just me. I hope you're on uh, the same page with me there. But uh, that's, that's how that goes. Um, Cole, any one of your things you wrote down, 3, 1, or Q? Uh, the biggest need of man is Jesus. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, without Christ, you ain't got much. You got a, a long eternity of, of suffering waiting for you without Christ. Yeah. JT, anything? Um, everything we do, we do for men to see and we should be doing it for God to see. Oh, I like that. Okay, so now we're we're going into the realm of uh, the Pharisees and how, uh, was there anything wrong with their gifts? Was there anything wrong with the things that they contributed to the plates or their offerings? Uh, was there anything wrong with the physical things they were giving? We would say no. No. What was wrong? Aiden. The reason behind it. Yeah, it was the motivation behind it. And uh, what did what did God say, or what did Jesus say was wrong with it? What was wrong with their motivations? And then what should our motivations be uh, when you and I, you know, contribute time, talent, treasure uh, to the church, um, to just causes. What should our focus be? Trisha. Yeah, serving God and, and also loving our neighbor. Um, so where should the focus not be? Maybe that's a better way of asking the question. What was the flaw of the Pharisees? JT, I'll ask you because you wrote it down. Um, Exactly. It was it was all done out of selfish ambition. All right. I am giving everybody. Look what I am giving. Look how much I'm giving. Uh, give me the credit. Give me the glory. Give me the uh, uh, the spotlight. Uh, but the Lord says, well, let's take a look at the fill in the blank here. Number eight. When you give to the needy, when you give an offering in church. When you do something nice, when you help a little old lady across the street, don't expect something out of her purse. Don't expect um, even a pat on the back. Don't even expect a thank you. It says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing so that your giving may be in secret. Well, isn't that just against every instinct that we have as people, All right? We feel so good about ourselves when we help somebody and then we're also looking for that, that little kickback, aren't we? Right, when you're doing your uh, vocational hours. I unloaded the dishwasher every night this week. And I don't get anything out of it, right? We always expect something, but we shouldn't. We shouldn't. We should do it out of uh, love and care for our families, for our neighbors, for uh, whoever else is benefiting from our, our, uh, our time, talent, and treasure, right? It says, it continues, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And I think that's a key element that we miss, isn't it? We are rewarded. We are rewarded for all the good things that we do in our lives for other people. It might not be the reward that we want. It might not be the, the treat that we think we deserve, but it's so much better than that, isn't it? I mean, it's an eternal reward that, that we can't purchase for ourselves, that no one can give to us on this earth. Uh, so we've got to have the long game in mind. And uh, just love, love your neighbor and do it for the right reasons. And when you mess up, ask for forgiveness because forgiveness is there for you too. All right. I want to talk about um, how we blur the spheres in regard to church. Do you remember this part? Bill Tackett talking about how we might uh, go overboard in one way and then overboard on the other way when it comes to uh, the need for church or the not needing to go to church. Jensen, do you remember any of this part? Of course, that's why I raised my hand. But <laughs> he, he was basically saying where people will like say, oh, if, uh, if I can worship God myself when I go to church, and that's kind of going the overboard of uh, not going to church at all, because yeah. you think you can do it yourself, but really you can't. 
um, and then going to overboard with church where you kind of forget about other things and try to center it around yourself a lot more instead of just doing it out of the command you try to put yourself up saying oh I go to church four times out of the week and everything kind of put yourself on a pedestal sure yeah so it can go both ways right uh, I think it, it more goes the way of, I don't have to go to church in our culture today. I don't have to go to church because what? What are some of the main excuses people give? What are some of the main excuses you and I give sometimes? Chase? Uh, we go to a Christian school, so we got to go every day. I listen, I, I pray every day. I go to chapel every day. Uh, we read the Bible in almost every class. Uh, I hear a devotion read to me every day. Why do I have to spend my Sunday morning going to church? Excuses that we hear often. What else? Brandon? Sleep. I got to sleep. It's my morning to catch up on some Z's, right? It's been a long week. When else do I get a chance to sleep in? Sunday morning. That's it. Aiden? God will forgive me anyways. Yeah, God will forgive me anyways. Uh, we call that cheap grace, right? Uh, I know God will forgive me, so I'm just going to keep living my sinful way. Uh, you know, it's using God as kind of this um, this dispenser of forgiveness instead of uh, allowing Him to change your habits and your life and transform you into a new creature, which is what He wants you to do and what He wants you to be. Um, remember, this life on Earth is about the process of being made holy, sanctification. He justifies us. He justifies us, makes us right with God through Christ. But then there's a response from us, isn't there? There ought to be. There ought to be a cooperation from then on, working hand in hand with the Holy Spirit, being made holy throughout our lives. We can never reach perfection. We know this. And sometimes we use that as an excuse uh, to, to continue our sinful ways. But we need to take a step back and realize no, I'm a Christian. I'm a changed person. I need to change my ways. I need to do what God expects of me. And by the way, when it comes to church, all we have to say is, God commands it. Don't give up meeting like some are in the habit of doing. Right? That's as much as we have to say. I know Pastor Barkley, when he came in, he talked about this. Right? How uh, every one of your butts should be in a pew on Sunday morning. And any excuse you give is BS. It's out of selfishness, and it, it is out of uh, uh, selfish reasons. It's out of um, a lack of, of care and understanding. That's Every single excuse you can give, it boils down to that. Be in church. Go to church. Because guess who's working there? People think church is what I do on Sunday morning. No. Church is what God is doing in your heart on Sunday morning. If you have a hard time getting there, you can let me know. I can help organize some uh, transportation for you. All right? That's a serious offer, by the way. Those of you who need a ride, those of you who don't know where to go, if your folks aren't doing it for you, aren't giving you a ride, let me know. I'd be happy to help. Okay? The Lord, as Mr. Zorner says, what? Sunday, 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 be there. The Lord loves you when he's in your house. He's you're in his house. Yeah. Anywho, we blur the spheres. We we blur the spheres and it it shows our sinfulness. Oh boy, what else do we have? Oh, we could talk about prostitution. And whoring. How do those words come into play? Jake, do you recall? Were you paying attention on the video? <laughs> I was paying attention. It was a little difficult to comprehend, though. Sorry. Okay. Well, in this covenant relationship, when he brings us in to the Trinity, when he resides in us, and we pick something else, sleep, uh, sporting events, anything else, we are whoring ourselves. We are being adulterous in this relationship, right? So God uses these terms um, rightfully. Whenever you tell your significant other, eh, you're not enough for me, I'm gonna go here. 
to gain fulfillment, or I'm going to go here to give myself pleasure. That is the definition of prostitution, of whoring. Uh, and in this relationship, we are guilty. So you're a whore, I'm a whore. And we should be proud of this fact, by the way. It sounds funny, but uh, these, are, these are not things that we ought to be proud of. Uh, but there is forgiveness extended to us uh, when, we, when we are adulterous in this relationship and we are always welcomed back into the fold, just like the prodigal son, right? Uh, whenever we come back to him with repentant hearts, he is offering forgiveness in abundantly. He never runs out. So don't forget that. You've never sinned too much to be forgiven. You've never gone to church or not gone to church enough to not be forgiven. <clears throat> Last thing I want to talk about here is buyer's remorse. All right, Del Tech had said he's a big fan of tools, right? And then he mentioned a pink flamingo. I don't know where he was going with that, but uh, I think you and I can understand this pretty well with uh, always needing the latest, greatest gadgets or thing or shoes or clothes or whatever. But whenever we do finally acquire these things, how does it make us feel? I'm happy for a while, but then what happens? Well, the next shoe comes out, the next phone comes out, the next car comes out, the, the newer clothes come out. And what do we want now? The new stuff. All right, this is called the hedonic treadmill. My psychology peeps in the room will know what the hedonic treadmill is. It is this, this treadmill of unsatisfaction, of constantly needing replenishment, of needing new stuff over and over and over again. Um, but that leaves us empty, that leaves us hungry, and it leaves us hollow. God made us for himself, and when we seek after him, when we live our lives with him as number one, we are fulfilled. We have meaning. Um, our lives become full and rich and blessed. Our lives don't become easier. That's, that's heresy, right? Uh, I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here. The life of a Christian is not is not guaranteed to be easy or fun or or or, or blissful at all times, uh, but we have an eternity waiting for us uh, that has been purchased for us on the cross. That's all I want to do. I think uh, I think you guys are prepared for the quiz on Monday. Um, we might just touch on a couple of the main topics before we take that. Um, questions? Good. Excellent. All right. You guys have a good day. I think the bell's gonna ring here shortly. Thanks, Lizzie. See you back uh, next year, maybe.